Welcome back, this is the Network Berg, and in this lecture we'll be going over implementing routes on a network. We'll be looking at adding default routes as well as adding specific destination routes and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. All right, I've got a little topology here in EVNG and I don't want this to be confusing, so please, please don't treat routing as this big giant mountainous thing that's really um, going to hit you. It, it's really straightforward once you get the hang of it. You just need to get used to it by practicing it, by setting up some practice routes. That's why I recommend stuff like EVNG or even small routers so that you can just figure out how routing works. Um, but in our topology, I've essentially got three routers, two of the routers, which is router two and three at the bottom. They're hosting some LAN networks. And by the end of this lesson, these two LAN networks will be able to communicate with each other using static routes. And we'll also be setting up some default routes out to the internet on those routers so that we can get internet access. All right, so let's get into some configuration. First thing I wanna do is I want to just get into uh, Winbox and then I want to connect onto router one on Romon. And then we're going to connect onto router two to configure a default route out. So I'll connect onto router two and I will just zoom in and we'll navigate to the routing table. So we'll go to IP routes and let me just delete that old entry quickly. <laughs> and in the routing table, what we want to do is we want to set up a default route out. And to achieve this, we can just click on the plus and we can specify the destination address and that's 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. And the gateway is going to be the IP address of router one. So we're working on router two, but we're going to use this IP addressing that exists between router two and one, which is 10.128.100. And router one's IP is dot 129. So we use that as our gateway. So 10, 128, 100, 129. We'll apply this. And this will add a static route into our routing table. I forgot to just mention these other routes that exist. These are the directly connected routes. And they exist because we've added IP addresses on our interfaces. So they are locally configured IP addresses. They're on the router itself. All right, now we've configured a default route out. Let's just see, do we have internet access? So we're going to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 and we do indeed have internet access, so that's perfect. We're going to do the same for router three quickly, but this will just do through the command line so you can see the differences. So this is going to be, let's just first look at our routing table. We can see that by going IP route print. So there's our routing table. And if I want to add a route, it's as simple as IP route add destination dash address equals 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0 and gateway equals 10.128.100.33. That is going to be the gateway. If I look, just look at my topology as well, we can see dot 33 is the IP address of this router one. And let's just verify, can I get out to the internet? Or let's look at our routing table, IP route print. So we can see the default route has been added. And let's see, can I ping out? I can. So I've got internet access on both of my routers. Now let's ask the question, can my two LAN networks get to each other? Let's quickly see. What I'll do is from router two on Winbox, I'll also just do a ping, but through the terminal here. And let's see, can I ping? Um, 172.16.0.1, which is the LAN address of router 3, site B's router. Can I ping that? No, that's failing at the moment. All right, so I know why that's failing. Uh, do you guys have any idea? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to like leave you hanging or anything, but the reason this is failing, even though we've got default routes out and it is pushing all traffic to router 1, router 1 probably has no idea about these networks. So router one doesn't know how to get to this network. So it's just discarding that traffic. So let's get onto router one and I'll just connect onto Winbox for this. So let me go to my neighbors, connect on Winbox and then zoom in. And then let's add our IP. So let's go to IP route. So router one already has a default route out. And it's got some other inter interfaces configured here. But what I want to do now is just click on the plus, And now we're going to specify our destination. So from router one, 
I want to add routes for these LAN networks to their gateways. So router three and router two's IP addresses on the WAN. So site A is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. And I'm going to route traffic to 10.128.100.130. So let's add that. So 192.168.0.0 slash 24. If I want to get there, I'm going to use 10.128.100.130. I'm going to apply this and now I've got a route for that. But I've only got one route now. I need to add the route for the 172 side as well. So let's quickly add that. And let's do that on router one. And you can copy a route by just double clicking it. You can copy and then you can quickly also just change some of this stuff. So I'll just change this for 172.16.00/24. But we know this gateway is going to be different as well. So this is also 10.128.100. 134. That is the WAN IP address of router 3. Let's apply 10, 128, 100, 134. That failed. Let's just quickly see why that's failing. So 10, 128, 100. Oh, it's, it's just 34. Sorry, I don't know why. I thought it's like 134. All right, so now we've got two active routes. And you saw it, it did turn blue because the route didn't know about that interface or the actual um, IP address. So that's why it failed. Okay, so now we've got two active routes and they each go to their respective routers. Let's quickly test again now. So what I'll do is um, I'll go to router two again and let's try and do that same ping to 172.16.0.1. Hooray, I, I get a response now. And I'd like to do the same test by just going to a PC that's connected on um, site A, and this PC's IP address is 192.168.0.10. So let's see, can I ping 172.16.0.20? I think that is the IP address I assigned for the PC2 on the right. That is correct. Can I ping? I can ping across. So that's great. So the routing does work. Um, one thing I do want to just stress out with the routing, if I do a trace, can I do a trace? Um, from this virtual PC, let's just see, 172.16.0.20. Uh, let's see if it's trace RT, 172.16.0.20. All right, perfect. So if I do a trace route, we can actually see the path that the route took or that the traffic took to get to its destination. And this is vital. I don't, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the trace route when I was talking about basic troubleshooting tools, but each of these items present a router where traffic was and was being forwarded to next. So traffic first went to router two on the left-hand side. So it first forwarded or sent the traffic to router two, router two received it. Then router two sent it on to router one, which is here. Then router one received it and sent it off to router three. And then from router three, it just got to its destination. So that's also why trace route is nice because you can actually path or you can figure out the path traffic took to eventually get to a certain destination. And if you see something isn't getting somewhere, then you could look at the last hop and then be like, okay, traffic was stopping there last. Either those people are blocking ICMP or trace traffic from happening, or um, there's a problem there and they can potentially investigate and sort out those issues. Okay, th this covers, basic routing. So now you know how to add a default route out to the internet, as well as how to just add static routes as an administrator to get between different networks. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.